Okay, we are continuing the Money Button documentation series. And in this uh, video, we're gonna talk about private keys and we have a, a sort of a three different videos that we're going to do that are all related, private keys, public keys, and addresses. And this video is private keys only, and you can see the corresponding videos uh, about public keys and addresses uh, in, in the links, as well as the documentation we have about these things. Um, so in BSV, the library, we have uh, a, a bunch of different ways to manage keys. So first of all, private keys are basically the thing that you have to have to be able to spend money. So a private key corresponds to a public key. A public key is something you can give to other people. The private key you want to keep private, which is why they're named this way. And an address is the hash of a public key. So when you receive money, it goes to an output. The output contains an, an address. And when you spend money, what you're, what you're doing is you're basically signing a transaction that links to that output and it contains a signature that's created by your private key. So this video is all about just what are private keys, which we've sort of covered them before because we talked about big numbers. And one of the primary uses for big numbers are for private keys because a private key basically is a 256 bit uh, a big number. So do you guys have any, any comments or questions or otherwise I can dive in and just go into uh, start showing some uh, examples and, and stuff like that? No, oh, let, let, let's go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so let me open up. Uh, so as usual here, we'll just look at, uh, I'll just start with some examples. So this is just a terminal I have open for, uh, for doing a Bitcoin SV stuff. So I'll require the library BSV and it's very easy to create a new private key. Uh, BSV dot uh, private key dot from random uh, is a good way to do this. And what this is, is it's basically that easy to generate a new private key. Now I can output it as a string. And this is something called wallet input format. There are two different ways to show the same value here. So WIF, because you'll see this show up whenever people talk about private keys in Bitcoin. What WIF stands for is wallet input format. So in order to allow people to export private keys from one wallet and import them into another one, or to just back them up or something so that you can import your own private keys again later, this is one of the common ways to do it. So this is just what it looks like when you have a private key. Um, other interesting things about private keys, so you can do things like this. So a private key basically is a big number. And so we can look directly at what is that number. So this is one I've just generated randomly. So it is just a really long number, basically. So that's what a private key is. And you wouldn't normally print it out this way. You print it out this way because it has a couple other properties. So a private key can also be compressed. Actually, it's not really the private key that's compressed. It's whether the corresponding public key is compressed or not. So we sort of talked about this briefly in one of the other videos, but and we'll cover again when we talk about public keys. But the basic idea is a public key can be either just the Y value and a byte indicating whether Y is odd or not, or it can be both the X value and the Y value. And it's different because when you hash the public key to get the address, you get a different address. So it matters whether the corresponding public key is compressed or not. So we have a way of writing down in a private key whether the public key is compressed because that will give you a different address. So there's two different ways to do it. Now, by default, it's always compressed because there's basically never a reason not to, except in very, very early on, people used uncompressed uh, public keys. But in any case, most of the time it's gonna be uh, uh, compressed. And you can do things like, basically the only other thing that you really care about besides this would be something like being able to import a private key. Uh, we'll call this one private key two um that from string and i can do this one of two ways here bsv dot yes. yep. whoops good point bsv dot um i can do it uh either this way or i can do from with either one of these uh, in the in the in the case of a, of a string there or sorry in the case of a private key they're exactly the same so i can import uh, you know, a, a private key and then print it back out again and it's the same thing. So this is something, basically if you have a, uh, a wallet where, whoops, let me just fix that. Private cat key, no private key, there we go. Okay, so basically if you have a wallet, you might wanna do things where you import 
from a file or something like that, a, num a number of different private keys. Now we'll see that basically, although this is how wallets work on the inside, they use these private keys uh, to actually, you know, ultimately you have to have private keys to, to sign transactions. What wallets normally do now is something more sophisticated where you have a mnemonic and a mnemonic is used to derive an extended private key. So that's what money button does. And that's what basically every modern wallet does. So those are different keys that are used to derive private keys. So we'll just talk about that later when we get to things like BIP32 and BIP39, which are the standards for, for doing that stuff. Um, but these can are, you, um, sorry, yeah, can you speak briefly what is a mnemonic for people who doesn't know? Sure, so basically in, a, in like a modern wallet, you would have something where you have a, a mnemonic that looks something like this. Like it just, I'll just call it word, like word one and then like word two, et cetera. And a mnemonic would just be a series of words like that, that you can use to actually derive a bunch of different private keys. And so modern wallets use a single mnemonic, uh, which allows you to just, rather than having to write down a whole bunch of different private keys, you write down one mnemonic. So that's basically what a mnemonic is. Um, and that'll, we'll probably cover that in a specific video just because it's kind of its own standard and people will be able to see that uh, in detail uh, if they want to make a, a wallet, wallet compatible with that. And, and just to, to link with the other videos, basically you can create a private key using a big number randomly and encoding it into base 58, right? That is- Yep, yep, good point. Basically. Okay, good. Yeah, that's another good point that I should explicitly mention, which is it is base 58 check notation. So just like we talked about in the other video, which seemed like I, I commented afterwards that it was boring, <laughs> but it was, it's important because you see it show up over and over and over again. That's what this is. This is base 58 check notation. Actually, that's a, a good point. Why don't we just look at this source code quickly and we'll, we'll glance at that and people will see that really uh, clearly. So let me just cancel out of screen share here and go into a different screen share where I open up the source code and give me one minute here. I like put this in a window that uh, uh, people will be able to see. Okay, I've got this open. Now, let me find my window back. Okay, you guys see this? I've got private key source code open. Yes. Okay, so what we have in here is that there's quite a lot of stuff in here. Most of it's not important. Uh, and it's a lot of it's stuff that you don't really have to worry about. But uh, importantly are things like, uh, let's see here, let's find, if we find like probably from WIF is probably where some of this code is. They have a bunch of, they, they put the code in, in different places. So it's a bit hard to understand how some of this works. But basically you can import, you know, if you import like a, a string or whatever, it is a, a bunny, running a bunch of internal methods in here, but I'll just show you at the top. We can, we can find, we'll just, actually the way we'll do this is we'll just search for it directly. So here we have uh, this method here runs, this is when you interpret a string or whatever, it's base 58 check. So this is decoding it and somewhere in here we've got an encoding as well. Uh, so that's basically what's going on. So here's the two with, this one's a little bit easier to understand because they simply have the code in one function here. So two with basically just tells you the network is either testnet or mainnet. So if you format a private key on testnet, you get a different looking value. So it matters whether it's mainnet or testnet. Mainnet just means real Bitcoin and testnet means if you don't want to accidentally send real money to a fake address, then you use testnet and it's, it's base 58 check. So that's where that shows up again. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, I, I think we covered basically the important ones. So it's basically exporting to a string and importing from a string and generating new ones randomly are pretty much the only things that actually matter most of the time for, for a private key. Right, anything else that I miss anything guys? We could actually here, we'll look at one more thing, which is let's just glance at the documentation um for this
And uh, so we, this is just what our documentation looks like right now. And this basically explains the same type of thing we just said. So how to generate one randomly, how to convert it into wallet import format, and then how to import it back in. And, and then also the difference between mainnet and testnet and how basically on testnet, you'll see values that start with a C. The private key will start with a C. On mainnet, it always starts with either a K or an L based on the way that they, they have the base 58 check uh, encoding working uh, with their right. prefix. Okay, so so that's it. Uh, did, did I miss anything? We can uh, well, I guess I'll mention before before you guys remind me that people should visit moneybutton.com uh, to see links to all of our resources, obviously including the main app Money Button. Visit docs.moneybutton.com to see all of this documentation, and uh, we have a number of other resources, uh, including our Telegram group is a good place to ask questions. So visit t.me/moneybuttonhelp. Uh, if you want to actually talk with us and get input about this library or about anything else. And we're on Twitter and, of course, YouTube as well. All right. Uh, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, I mean, you said. No, I think, that, yeah, everything is covered. Okay, good. Then uh, we'll, we'll have a, two more videos after this on public keys and addresses.